Good morning, everyone. Network Empire Tech Foundation Training 1, Week 6. I hope all of you are caffeinated or ready to roll. We still have a few people rolling in. And let's make sure that we have everybody. How is everybody this morning? Give me a 1 if you're awesome and 2 if you're perfectly awful. A little interaction here. It's okay to be honest, by the way. That way I won't... Uh, uh, push back too hard on anyone. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's a couple of twos in here. So it's good to see you, Brian. Good to see you, Garrett. I'm, I won't actually. I won't say hello to any of you who put a two because I'm afraid to talk to you if you're in a bad mood. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, we still have some guys coming in. This is the much-awaited one feed to rule them all. Uh, course and I've never actually taught this course by myself although I am one of the inventors of the concept and system of course along with my team Sue Bell, Matt Cruz all of us have contributed a lot into the development Jimmy Kelly also uh, as some of you have heard we have some new improvements to the one feed coming up which we'll announce to the public at a later date okay good you're not in a bad mood well you did put a two up there Mitch okay um, now let me just see who who I'm missing today. This event will be recorded and you will have the event available to you. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about why Matt Cruz is not going to be here. Uh, apparently South Africa is in the middle of a gigantic storm right now and he's not going to be able, he would not be, I think he is lurking and he will lurk until his house is carried away in a tornado and that's how committed he is. He was here, but he can't really talk. When I was talking to him and trying to communicate him before the communicate with him before the event, I could actually hear the wind howling, <laughs> and I could only hear every two or three words. So, can I, if you guys can see my screen, can you please give a one? Okay. I am actually at Sue's place. Today we have Kevin McCarthy in from England, who is our semantic web guru and vigilant help desk supervisor and many, many other things. So it's been a great day, a couple of days so far. We are really, really excited. One of the things that I was doing yesterday with Kevin is, and Sue is debugging and or enhancing the semantic pin bid team. So just kind of letting you guys know what I'm excited about. Also, late into the night, we are we're debugging and enhancing the video silo plugin rewrite. Okay. Um, somebody stole my screen. Matt, can you not do that? Hang on, guys. We have some technical difficulties. Hang on, guys. We're just figuring this out. Sorry, guys. This is what you call technical difficulties.
I really don't understand what's going on. I'm sorry, Sue. I don't really know what's happening. So somehow I lost presenter. I'm going to go ahead and try that again. Yeah, Roy, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry about that. You do not want to see me first thing in the morning, trust me. All right, you guys. Can everybody see my screen now? What? Black. Roy, can you see my screen? What do you tell me? Describe what you see on my screen. Is that one feed set up? Okay. Sue is saying in the next room is saying that she sees black. All right. Who knows? It's it's the curse of the South African storm. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you. And the good news about all that is that we did allow a lot of the people time to come in. Now, give, if any of you are familiar with a one feed to rule them all concept that we've had around for years, give me a one. If you're completely unfamiliar with this concept, give me a two. Okay. Yes, but this is the, somebody wants a link. I will definitely drop this. This is a, just a brief overview in the wiki. Now, we're going to get, you got plenty of stuff in your members area to discuss this concept. And um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this wiki link to everybody, entire audience. And I also want to provide the master primary site build loop. I believe this is what Matt created. I'm going to drop that to the entire audience. And actually, let's go back a little bit into the archives to give you guys the whole story before we pull it, go into the Tech Foundation version of it. Let me... There's a one feed to roll them all standalone course that we launched several months ago. And it gives a basic insight. Uh, on this wiki entry, there is a really good video that summarizes some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And here's a, here's a summary of the, it's called the best explanation of one feed to rule them all that we've had so far. You can watch those on that page. We're going to get into it a little bit more specific to you guys. And also, um, this is, the standalone course is going to be under, I believe it's traffic generation in your members area. To give you guys a quick overview, and this is members only, this is stuff that you will not find in the wiki. Um, let me see if I can find that one feed to a little more course. Rapid fire. There it is. Um, if you go under, um, here's the URL up here under traffic generation. So it's members area. Traffic generation, that's at the bottom here, called one feed. I'm going to drop this link in here, too. And you do need to be logged in to the membership uh, site in order to get this. And if for some reason one of you don't have access, let me know. I'm going to give you this chart. I'll hand this chart to you. This is the original one feed. I just want you to have an original overview of what that is. 
Just go ahead and drop that in there. Just ping me privately if you do not have this sheet. Okay, so here's the actual. Yes, you should, Brett, but again, hit me on Skype. Uh, and I'll drop this chart in the Tech Foundation Skype room for all of you after the event, okay? And as many of you know, there has been some enhancements on this that we'll go into at another time. The whole purpose, let me just see if I can give you a... Who, un who in here, give me a one if you understand what an RSS feed is, and give me a two if you do not. And I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I speak to plenty of people every day who don't even know that their blog has an RSS feed. So the one feed to rule them all system is designed to make sure that you can automate as many backlinks as possible. And it's the thing that I'm the most excited about. It's one of the things that makes your you everywhere model, which is the whole Sue Bell's one web ring, socially activated perpetual downstream traffic system that we've been building. Okay. Has everybody been to u-everywhere.com? You're familiar with the concept of building out a broadcasting network? Give me a one if you are aware of, a, of what we mean by a online broadcasting network. Okay. So here's a diagram of it. It's kind of a superficial diagram. It's more for marketing. Uh, but you guys get the general idea with your money site sitting at the middle of it, right? Okay. And of course, we prefer that your money sites, that's what you've been building with Matt for the last few weeks. By the way, just quick uh, group survey. Who is up to speed and has completed all of the steps and homework assignments up to uh, part week f five, up to last week? And who has not? And it's okay. Give me a one if you have and two if you have not. I know that you'll catch up. We don't slap any knuckles with rulers around here. We're just checking in to see where. Yes, I am aware that Kraken is an issue, Mitch. Just a quick update on that. Since you guys are inner circle, we have um, Google itself is incorporating a new programming language into their system. And so we have to wait until they're finished in order to figure out what they've done or in order to adjust. So they themselves are having problems internally. So AdWords itself is a problem. Yeah. And okay, uh, so Dan, you haven't received that. Okay. I'll just jot that down so we know that you, there's a couple of you guys who are incomplete. Yeah, you won't be able to move on past that. But what you can do, there's a lot of the things that you can do today that you can at least start to map out uh, that you can do without having got all that stuff. You don't want to publish a lot because the thing about RSS feeds is as soon as you publish a blog post and you've got it syndicated out there, it will start to go everywhere. Okay, so again, but you can start to map out. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm doing really large scale things, I mean, just take a look at this. Um, you know, just one, this is our small one feed map. <laughs> okay, I mean, I got to draw stuff out before I do it. So that's one of the things you can do while you're, for those of you who maybe haven't got your report back. Okay, start drawing out within, within the context of your own empire. Instead of it having it be general, go, okay, well, here's my money site. And then normally the homework assignment I do for week uh, six is on your blog and or any other sites that you might have. Most people only have one or two, and that's okay. Make a list of all the RSS feeds that you have for your money site. Okay, so um, go ahead and type in the, the window, the location of your RSS feed to your money blog. So it would be www.yourblog.com forward slash. Go ahead and write, type in your, that's a, it's a pop quiz. Where's your feed located? Brett, you got it right. I want to see everybody's uh, feed URL to their money blog. And if you don't know it, put don't know. Good, Dan. Got it. Everyone? Okay. There's a don't know. That's okay. I won't embarrass anyone. It's not, you know, 
It's not the end of the world. We're going to show you guys where it is. We've got to start with the basics. Anybody else not know where their feed URL is for their primary blog? Okay. Brett asks, the thing I'm not clear on is stacking the RSS feeds upon each other. Should I be combining my site.com forward slash feed with my YouTube channel feed, my Tumblr feed, etc., along with related feeds from other sites within a Yahoo Pipes? A lot of this will be clear uh, on this particular map. This is the original one feed. Okay, you can do what's called uh, one feed blending. But for the purposes of this uh, course, inside, you guys all know that you're on week, let me just make sure. We're on week six, right? So one of the things that, before you start shredding and doing all that kind of stuff, we're keeping things really simple. To answer a question, your feed is www.yourblog.com forward slash feed. Okay? Hopefully everybody knows that, right? And if you don't, that's cool. Now you do. Should... In Chrome, oh, that's right, this one is busted. Isn't that wonderful? I gave you guys an awesome example. By the way, um, feeds can break, so you need to check <laughs> and be aware of how, to, how that works. So all blogs have a feed by default. Okay, WordPress has a built-in feed. I think ours is located here. Okay. And in Chrome, you can see the direct XML. And if you, it depends on the browser you look in and in the browser general settings. For example, in, in Mozilla, which does confuse, confuse some people, you're going to see it in terms of human interface because they've got, um, Mozilla has a default setting to make it friendly for the original purpose that a RSS feed was so that you could follow someone's information as it came out. It was poll-based marketing, right? Or it was kind of a way to follow somebody without having to be on that email list, which really was is kind of failed, pretty much. Some people use it, some people don't. By virtue of the fact that the Google Reader was kind of deprecated and removed, you, can, you get an idea that, you know, nobody used RSS feeds really for the purpose of at least not a lot of people uses RSS feeds for the purpose of following blogs. You guys get that? Give me a one if you understand the original reasons that RSS existed was so that you could follow. Does that make sense? Just give me some feedback. It's a good idea to know where things came from. Okay, but that's not what we do with it. We have evil purposes for that purpose. Okay, the good news is, is that it's a close, it's a good way to automate because every time you publish on your blog, at least with posts, okay, it'll automatically publish a link. You guys get that? And because you have that link being published automatically, there's stuff that you can do with it. And you can syndicate it and push it to other places and, and create backlinks and get them published on high domain authority sites, which then give you positive page and domain authority juice back to your site. Um, and that's really what the one feed is all about, is taking advantage of the fact that you're automatically publishing posts and or automatically, even when you're manually publishing a post on your money site, it's going to still automatically go to your feed. Now, it doesn't publish pages, I think, by default. I don't know about the new WordPress version. I'm not a WordPress expert, but I think you have to add a plugin if you want to publish pages to your feed. I think a lot of our guys who are using uh, the older version of the video silo plugin, I don't know about the newer version, um, pages aren't published unless you add a, a plugin add-on which then will add the page to the feed. Okay, so that's um, general. Just a basic introduction to Feeds 101 and the difference between these two. Um, duplicate content. Our current, uh, what, uh, Brad is asking, uh, how does duplicate content factor into feeds? Um, the general thing that we talked about, I think, in the traffic hospital course last week um, current standards, I think, that Sue and Jimmy have are you need to go in and change inside your blog. You need to change from full text to the default is full, 
when you install your blog. Um, let me just try to find an example of that. This is only a demo, a demo blog, so let me get rid of that. So this is the, the PinVid blog that semantic theme that Kevin and I were working on last night, so don't judge me too harshly. This is 100% prototype, okay? I want to give you guys an example of what you need to do to make sure that you reduce duplicate content. Okay, this is a test site only because we were testing the new theme. Uh, but when you go to your general settings, see where it says um, under reading? Uh, for each article in a feed, full text versus summary. Give me one if you guys can see my if the screen has changed for you fast enough. What's interesting, and kind of caught me off guard a little bit because I'd forgotten that, you guys, you want to go ahead and switch from full text to summary. There are plenty of technologies out there for um, that will allow people like me to take the full text from your site and then republish it deeper in my network because I don't care as much about dupe content, right? Like on a WR2, there's plenty of technologies that pull feeds and then jack some of the content, right? Well, don't give it, but don't make it easy for people. Just give them a summary or just a little bit of a snippet. That's going to reduce Brett content um, redundancy problems a lot in the RSS feed environment. Okay, um, a lot of my PinVid sites pretty much have you know YouTube's videos in the feed. You can remove it from the feed and just use a link. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. But the general rule of thumb is go for a summary. I mean, honestly, if I had my druthers, you know, on big sites, rather than repeating the headline, I would spin the headlines a bit. But it depends on, there's a diminishing return depending upon where in the network it's going. Does that, guys make, does that make sense to you guys and gals? Looks like we had a few more people come in. Okay. So that's one quick thing that you can do. And I would also add, Brett, that... I don't have any of my other super hardcore technical expert team members uh, on the call right now. Um, but I would also add that remember as your domain authority goes up that your concern about dupe content goes down. I mean, goes down relative to that. So when you start getting up in the 35 to 45 domain authority and higher, I think Jimmy or Sue said like 52 is when you become pretty robust like dupe content. If you're seriously concerned about um, dupe content issues or you've been hit with a, a penalty, I would strongly recommend taking our more advanced courses because there'd be no way for me to get into that today. Um, first of all, I'm not the expert and you don't want to listen to a lot of what I have to say about penalties <laughs> because I'm also a student of our team. Uh, however, if you're serious about it, you're going to want to go to our traffic hospital course and that is an extra. It's not included in the tech foundation it's actually an upgrade because really you don't need that unless you've you've had your site de-indexed or penalized um, although it is a preventative I um, Sue actually thinks people should really be aware of all that stuff so you know she considers it not just merely a, a depenalization course it's also a, a preventative course but that's not what we're teaching now but if you do have any concerns about that Brett um, just know that we do have all the penalty issues and the preventative stuff in the traffic hospital course has Google changed the availability to the Google Plus feed? Um, Brett, we, uh, I was just talking to Sue the other day. We created a technology called the Google Plus RSS feed. And I'm kind of embarrassed because I didn't add the buy button to this page yet like she asked me to. But it is part of, there's a free trial. We call it our G Plus RSS maker. Um, and let me just see. can't remember where oh it's actually in the network empire area you guys have who's if you've played with the um, network empire Google plus RSS feed software already will you just give me one so I know what the level of knowledge here is 
Okay. Uh, Brett, to answer your question, Google Plus has never provided a Google uh, an RSS feed. And that was one of the reasons why we created the software. Okay. So if you go to the member software area, it's one of the best kept secrets of Network Empire, which is why C was telling me the other day to stop having it be secret and put the sales page up finally. <laughs> um, Google Plus Plus Network Empire. So this was an original concept that I had with the Google Plus Plus course, which is also available to all of you inside the members area. Um, the course is, if you go to the members area software, you're going to see that. It's pretty inexpensive, but there's also a course that you might want to go through and read. We are updating some of it because Jimmy Kelly is adding some ridiculous twists in the domain authority stack course. But you just go in and you've got your dashboard. And you can turn any RSS feed. Here's the projects, rather. You can turn any Google Plus page or personal page into an RSS feed. Okay? And, there, what, and think about that. I'm going to give you guys some sneak peeks from our other courses like Domain Authority. Why would you want to use, why am I so hung up on Google Plus uh, having an RSS feed to the point where we spent several thousand dollars to, you know, tons of money to build an application because Google wouldn't give it to us? Can you guys, anybody care to guess why Google Plus I'm, I'm fixated on their RSS feeds? Yeah, Brett's got it. Domain Authority stacking. And not just Domain Authority stacking is... What is the domain authority of all Google platforms? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Brett got, Brett's kind of on the ball. He's been reading about the RSS automation. <laughs> um, uh, Roy's like 101. I don't think it's past. I don't think there's domain authority past 100, Roy. <laughs> but you know, for all intents and purposes, yeah, it's like a wild card. So. This is a very robust application, and like I said, it is one of the better kept secrets in our organization. Part of the reason we never re really went into for, um, into formal launch is because I just there's so many awesome products for us to launch, as I just kind of fell by the wayside, and and also we were in the middle of making it super robust, and it's been operational with no hitches for close to a year now. So the way that this works is you just simply go ahead and you start a new, like you come over here to the right side, you guys. You start a new project, and then you just put in your project name, your author name, your Google Plus, personal or business. If it's local, you can even determine, if it's a biz page, you can even decide to label it based on what, uh, you know, Google places, Google Pages gives you brand, company, art, local, you guys, you know what I mean? How many of have you guys started a business, a, a Google Plus biz page ever? Or... One if you have, two if you haven't, just general consensus. So the way this was programmed was to give you guys, guys the exact, just lets the software know what type of page it is, okay? But you can also switch to personal where all of that is not relevant, okay? Now what's interesting about this software is it doesn't only fetch the regular RSSs, you can also do the plus ones. So in the early days, and you can still do it, whenever you plus something, Google Plus creates a general feed for those pluses as well. I don't use this as much anymore because we weren't sure, when we programmed it, we weren't sure where they were going to go with the plus ones. But it does allow you to curate via plus ones your own sites into an RSS feed. So if I went through my entire, the, the reason I built this fetch your plus ones is that if I went through my entire empire, you know, say the, um, the you everywhere, and I clicked on each one of these and plus one of them or had a team, plus wanting them, it would create an RSS feed of all the things that I'm plusing, and then you could actually submit that feed to um, the RSS directories. So one of the things that you can do for RSS is you can submit them to the directories. I'm just giving you guys a general overview because I want you to go through each one of the modules in this week's course. It's going to explain a lot, but I just want to give you the highlights. So I use actually RSS to RSS submit. Okay, RSS submit. These things are not, in, by the way, none of these softwares are included in this course. There is a free trial of the Google Plus RSS feed, and I didn't actually, I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want to let you know what I personally use every day. Sorry for the URL. That's on our, uh, a very large client network we have. <laughs> just in case anybody wants. That's actually a pin bid site. You caught me. Um, but, you know, we use these things every day. Okay, so think about, 
I just want to give you the general highlights of what you can do with RSS feeds. If you've if you've generated a Google Plus RSS feed and a feed for all the social sites, which you talk, we're going to be talking about and more in upcoming certification courses how to accomplish all that. But just remember that anything that you create an RSS feed out of can be sent to the directories. And if those feeds are your URLs, you're creating backlinks. You're creating backlinks within backlinks within backlinks, all stacking domain authority over time. Okay. I'm trying to read. Brett is really putting out a lot of questions. Some of them are on topic and some of them are off topic. Brett, let me just hold off on that one until we continue, okay? Because I don't really understand what you're asking. Oh, no, actually, uh, Brett is asking a bit off topic. He has a contract to build 20 Google Plus Biz pages for a brand that has multiple physical locations within the U.S. Do you, do you recommend doing each separately or to use a Google Google's bulk tool? Um, Sue is going to answer that. She said um, you'll be fine either way. I would also add, Brett, that there's some pretty good stuff in our semantic web training uh, as well that you need to start considering with that. But I'm just going to let Sue's answer stand. You'll be okay either way. I would recommend creating a Google Plus RSS feed for each one, obviously, uh, and you know get that backlink stuff happening. Okay, let's go back to the actual found. I'm kind of all over the map here. I've never taught this course on my own. So let's go back to the week six to make sure that you guys know what you're going to be doing. Increase the reach. So you know it begins with your blog, yourblog.com forward slash feed. Okay. Now in week six, we're going to prepare your WR1 blog so you can set up the one feed traffic system. It's not just traffic. It's also backlinking, right? It's also domain authority. Uh, the way that Sue has designed the one feed and, and really enhanced it and cleaned it up from the original concept that I brought to her, and then Jimmy and Sue has taken it to a level that I could never have taken it to, um, it's, it's now all really focused on only choosing platforms and only building feeds and combinations that build your domain authority over time on automa automatic. Okay? And where that gets really interesting and, and actually completely mind-boggling, you guys, is when you get into the other um, cert certification trainings week two, which will be launching here in three weeks, where and the PINVID stuff. All of that works together. Your WR1 is published downstream, so everything is publishing. In other words, if you've got your feeds publishing, whenever you're updating content, that's going to be distributed to your other platforms, to your WRS2, like your social platforms. Okay, And that can all be automated downstream. And any of those that have feeds can then be published again. So you might have this gigantic pile of your core money sites publishing to your secondary networks with your own golden frame, but then they're also publishing to your WRS ones, right? These are your social platforms, Pinterest. All of that can pretty much be automated, okay? Now, so that's the purpose of RSS is like once you publish an article, <laughs> be sure that you really want to publish it once this is set up. Because, like, if you, an example is I had an outsourcer. He's really, really a good outsourcer. But every once in a while, somebody that he's working with will publish a typo in the title. Well, we've got this gigantic, freaking huge monster one feed set up. There's no way to go back and, like, correct that typo downstream on, like, 2,000 sites, right? <laughs> so you have to, my, my one caution about the one feed is lock and load. Before you hit the publish button, just have somebody, like, give it a once over. Because once you publish and it's live, you can't unpublish. That's the one admonishment I think I would make at the one feed. Not that I've ever published a typo to a thousand sites myself, but <laughs> not I have. So just make sure that there's that much power. With great power comes great responsibility. Okay, so you guys get that. Right? Give me a one if you understand the, the danger of, of something this powerful. Like it's kind of hard to undo. You guys get what I'm saying? I mean it's. I would say that this is by far the most dangerous module in the Tech Foundation course <laughs> because it's, it's that much. It's like, you know, a stick of dynamite. Um, Brett is asking, how often do you recommend publishing content on the WR1 site for local clients versus nas uh, national affiliate client sites? Uh, the answer to that question, Brett, is yes, or it depends. Uh, what I can do, I think, to answer Brett's question, let me just take a pause. Uh, we have something that we're no longer selling because it's sold out. It's called the Blog Boost. 
uh, that will probably give you a general idea, Brett, of, of the different kind of publishing rates. We call this frequency of publish. Sorry about my URLs. Let me just go ahead and let's talk about FOP. Does everybody know what FOP is? I got to said it out loud, didn't I? Sorry, it's been a long night. Okay. FOP means frequently of published. And this is really what Brett's kind of asking on a practical on the ground level. Frequency of published is a term used by us to explain ongoing SEO visitor traffic benefits from blogging, pinging, publishing. We propose that Google search algorithm has expanded to include frequency of published as yet another factor of the content ranking adequacy. The theory says that if a, if a website is updating with fresh content on a regular basis, then it is likely to be seen as more contemporary and valuable in the eyes of Google. Guys, this was written like a year ago. I guarantee you that it has an effect on stuff. <laughs> I mean, part of it's just you get more interactivity, right? When you're publishing and your list starts to build and you have your RSS feeds and you, 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 know, you lasso more, more traffic back to your money site, right? And of course, in Google Analytics, you can watch um, in Google Webmaster Tools, there's no question. When your frequency of publish goes up, your um, impression rate goes up site-wide, okay? And you can understand why that would be the case, right? Google is looking for activity. They're looking for engagement rank. They're looking for all these different things. So when that starts, to, by, by the mere fact that you're publishing, you're just going to have more engagement, right? That's the default. So some of it's just the actual frequency of publish is more novel and your audience is going to interact with your website more, right? The other side of that is I have witnessed technical facts that I believe Google is looking for interactivity for, you know, I watch the impression rates go up, not necessarily the click rate, because the click rate's based on the description, right, tag and many other factors, right? Your, your per persuasion architecture, when actually people click. But if your impression rates go up site-wide because you're publishing more, then the possibility, depending upon how well your persuasion architecture is working on the search engine results page, then you're, you at least you have the opportunity to get more clicks, right? You guys get what I'm saying? So that's what we're talking about with frequency of publish. I was going somewhere with that. I think I may have. Oh, yeah. Um, so with that frequency and publish in mind, Brett, we used to offer a product that is currently sold out uh, called... Uh, the blog boost and it, it got so popular that we have to start off we have we've had to stop offering it for a while because our the team that delivers it is too busy apparently nobody wants to publish their own content so <laughs> I don't know what it is with that let me go ahead and see if I can find that and Brett what that'll do is that'll probably help you um, have some insight into what you might want to offer in fact Brett if you wanted to you could even borrow the model you know, and just kind of create your own product with it. Let me see if I can find it, though. Um, that's going to be Blog Boost. I think Sue left it up. It might be a good template for you to think about what you might want to offer. And um, let me see, Blog Boost done for you. Brett, are you still on the call? Give me a one if you can see what I'm showing you here. I'll drop it in there. You can, okay. So this was one version of content, you know, should answer several questions. What was interesting is with these different patterns, the way that we were selling it is we, we were showing the number of inbound links that were created with our just our blog boost distribution. And I would have to double check. I believe the blog boost also included by default our one feed to rule them all product. I think that included with the, um, okay. And I would ask you guys on this page, this is, this is sold out. So if you find a buy button anywhere, please do not buy it. It's not for sale. We got too much activity on it. But this gives you a general idea, Brett, of what was happening, okay, where we published, you know, we go to Google Plus, we'd also use Gillum service over at Scoopit, which Scoopit is really, really valuable in the one feed, Pinterest, so when we were actually, um, yeah, that, that might help, let me, Brett, let me give you this, just so you know, I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but you can see the prices on here, if you guys are an agency, you know, $497 a month to do that stuff, and when you get it down, you can, you can, it can be quite profitable for you if you really want to do that, but it's going to be taking up a lot of your time. But this might help you just within terms of your own sites, you know, the value to the time ratio of what's happening there. It's very powerful to publish blog content, whether it's in a product launch where you're supposed to do 19, you know, blog posts per month before the product actually launches, or whether it's just ongoing content. You can begin to understand how much, how time consuming that kind of stuff actually is just based on our prices. Even our 
our offering on this for certified students was pretty expensive. So at least relative, it's, you know, it's a valuable service. I'll go ahead and drop that in there for Brad in case he wants to, you guys all might want to. Publishing content, you guys, is really valuable. And automating that, therefore, is extremely valuable. Brett says he's charging between $500 and $3,000 for content creation. Well, content creation is different than Blog Boost. This was only the Blog Boost. I don't believe we were providing any of the content. Okay, they had to do that. I'm pretty sure. All right. Good. All right, I've got to find myself again. We got way off the beaten path, didn't we? But frequency of publish is important. All right, and because remember, in my mind, when you think frequency of publish, you should be thinking RSS feed city, right? If you have 10 blog posts going out per week, which is huge, by the way, you've got 10 articles being added to your RSS feed that should go out and be syndicated, okay? So on week six, you're going to be creating your one feed account yourself from the perspective. Now, not all one feeds are 100% exactly the same, but more or less they are. I mean, there's general frameworks, you know, give or take a couple social media platforms that may or may not be appropriate. Okay. Uh, how many of you have already started setting up your one feed and mapping it out either conceptually or physically, meaning actually doing it? Give me a one if you've done any work at all on your one feed and two if it's still just in the freezer. Okay. First concept, okay. Good. Also part of um, week six is creating your second silo. Part of the way that Matt designed this program is because you have your first silo, you know, that's really all you need to start publishing. And the idea was to get you guys rolling. I believe that's what he's uh, trying to accomplish. Okay, so another aspect of week six, and he'll be following up with you in the Skype, is that you'll be ready to move on. Once you create your one feed account, then you'll be ready to move on your second silo, your uh, third and your other categories, and so on and so forth. Okay, now let me go set up the one feed automation. Let's make sure I didn't set up the layout of this course. I'm just making sure I'm following his program here. Okay, on if on this page, let me just drop this in for everybody. You're going to want to go through this page. This video is really, really good. Okay, if you haven't watched it already, please do. You will see that I've talked about some of this today. You'll learn about XML RSS and the one feed tra traffic system. Okay, and this is a early... We've had a, I've had a lot of difficulty, you guys, over the years explaining the one feed automation system. And every once in a while, you really nail it. And so I captured, and I think it was a three-hour webinar, I, I, I grabbed a 30-minute snippet because I don't think I could really do it better than that. And this has been left somewhat private, but I really just want to make sure that you either fast forward through it if you've got like audio announced or you know, whatever speeds up your audio but really take it to heart because it can generate a huge amount of revenue for you. It really is a precursor to the more advanced one feed systems that we have at domain authority, stacking.com and other more advanced courses that we have. So we'll get into the definition of XML, of RSS, blog and ping and all the things that you can apply. Okay, let's go ahead and look and see what kind of curriculum he's got for you. Okay, so in the basic one feed setup, you are going to need a YouTube account. And it looks like, Roy, you've already set up your YouTube account. And one of the things that I'd want to add here, which I don't, I haven't covered as well before, so let's go ahead and do that today. It's really important at this point that you understand what the heck you're selling. We've been through all that in the modules. Your persuasion architecture, what your brand is all about, and the rest. Because by setting up the one feed, the technical one feed, don't neglect your branding. Okay, so on your YouTube channel, I know you're probably all excited to like automate your YouTube channel and grab the RSS feed and cool, but just remember that when your feeds go out, you guys, that you're going to be dragging real traffic, not just bots. Okay, it's not just about backlinks. You're also going to be dragging, especially with your YouTube RSS feed because people like to watch TV. 
you're going to be dragging real people back to your channel. You're going to be dragging real people back to your site. So just make sure before you press the button on this thing, you know, that you've got your branding in place. Make sure your site looks nice. All right, that's why we're having you set it up carefully. So when it comes to your YouTube, I would recommend, you know, sweetening your channel a bit. Make sure it's presentable. And YouTube and Google and the Google dashboard is getting pretty sophisticated. So make sure that you have the YouTube channel that you want to be associated with your WR1. Some people have multiple channels. YouTube is trying to get people to put all their channels in one basket so that you toggle between them, right? Just think clearly about what you're doing with your channel because that RSS feed is going to become important, all right? And I believe we gave you the RSS feed. Uh, we've given you several RSS feeds. I'll drop the RSS feed here. If you go, well, I thought we gave you the RSS feed in this. That's all right. Let me grab it for you. Now, what's interesting is we teach you some more advanced RSS method, methods elsewhere that you can look forward to, but the general YouTube RSS feed still should be here. Okay. You guys should have no problem. Now, you're going to want to put in your own. Hopefully, you guys know that your channel ends up being youtube.com forward slash profile name, right? Unless you don't give it a profile name, then it's just a long number. I do recommend that you brand your profile in YouTube with a keyword. And then that keyword will go in there. So for us, it would be gdata.youtube.com and equals theme zoom, right? Let me just go ahead and try to do that. I'm always holding my breath a little bit because everybody's changing things so quickly. This should still be good. No problem. And start, yeah. So for example, one of our channels would be theme zoom. Also bear in mind as you guys begin to explore later, you'll find that, as I said, YouTube has multiple RSS feeds and just use the main one. Yeah. That's not very pretty. They may have changed that. I'll have to look it up for you. There it is. Yeah, that I was actually right. Um, so that does work. It was just unformatted, strangely, and surprise, surprise, Chrome. God forbid that Chrome should be able to read Google's own script. Okay, so um, you guys, uh, give me one if you understand what I just did. And two if you do not, because I want to make that clear. It's pretty cool. I just gave everybody, I gave the entire group the YouTube RSS feed. And then I just put it into a browser with our own channel. You can see the last video was the semantic web, not for marketing. It's a quick interview with Kevin Polly at the live certification of that. Okay, so think about, you know, if an RSS feed's going out there, if it's in a traffic environment, you know, you look at that, it'll, it's going to take you directly to the YouTube video with Kevin Polly talking about the semantic web. Okay. So the same kind of stuff happens. Now you can, where we talk on the more advanced levels, you uh, and I think Brett was asking, you can splice and dice these types of channels with your regular blog and come up with new feeds, and that's what Yahoo Pipes is for. I'm hoping we'll make it there today. Um, I just want you guys to get the, the basics. And if you have a very high domain, remember, what is the domain authority? Everybody all at once, what's the domain authority of YouTube? Just keeping this as a backdrop. Why are we doing all this crazy stuff? Thank you, Brett. Come on, everybody type it in. What's the domain authority of YouTube? <laughs> Who owns YouTube? Okay, right. Yay. Okay, everybody gets it. It's 100, right? Okay, so um, yes, high domain authority sites and the RSS feeds are very influential. Jimmy has confirmed this in a variety of different tests. An RSS feed is not an RSS feed is not an RSS feed. You want high quality, high domain authority RSS feeds. <clears throat> okay. And the interesting thing is, is that if you were to splice your RSS feeds in with a feed on the same topic and that uh, a YouTube feed on the same topic and that YouTube feed was really a channel that had a lot of page authority and a lot of clout 
and a lot of traffic, you would benefit from that. Okay, so this is really, it's a combination of domain authority and page authority. All right, good. So I'm going to go ahead and give, I need to add that. I'll go ahead and put the RSS feed right in here. Another thing that you, you're going to want to set up is Twitter feed. Twitter feed is an option to automatically publish from uh, your blog to your social media campaigns. Okay? This is just one option. Let me just go ahead and find that for you. Uh, has, anybody here not, has anybody here used Twitter feed before? A one if you have, and yes if you haven't. And I just want to make sure that you guys know, we're not closed to, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say, right? Twitter feed um, is starting to annoy me a little bit. I still use it a lot on my networks. Part of the reason is they require uh, tokens. Every once in a while, like three to four months, they just want to confirm. When, when it comes to Facebook, it's a free service, so you don't have to worry about that. But when it comes to Facebook, Facebook is getting so um, highfalutin, I guess, that a lot of the apps then will turn off. So, like, you can automate, you can be publishing via your RSS feed to Facebook fine for three or four months, and then all of a sudden they'll just turn it off and wait for you to log in to Twitter feed and activate it again. Well, that's, okay. that's all very well and good if you have a careful pattern of watching those things. But if you've got, you know, 9,000 sites or whatever, like we do, like a ton of sites, you don't want to be trying to remember to log in to Twitter feed. I think I have something like 150 Twitter feed accounts or something. <laughs> so I don't like to have to go in there or remind our outsourcers on a monthly basis to go into Twitter feed. It's a great quick and dirty, but just I'm really saying it's the Facebook that's the issue, not so much Twitter. But if you're starting to automate your, your Facebook fan pages for the one feed, I'm starting to twitch, to, um, twitch, yeah, I'm twitching. I'm starting to switch to other services. I'm currently using Hootsuite. Part of the reason that I use Hootsuite is because I have had, I've had RSS feeds running automatically via Hootsuite for over a year and a half, and they haven't stopped. To me, that's like, dang, that's automation. That means I could die in five years. These sites would still be rolling if nothing, <laughs> if the hosting was still being paid. You know, so that's that's really how I look at automation. I don't want to have to go back and click, you know, clean something up. I'm trying to read a question here. Another option that uh, a certified advisor, Kevin McCarthy, is using is if this, then that. He really likes to use that, and he's had no problems trying to start that. So. I'm going to go I'm going to add other ways that you can automate to your social media campaigns. All right, that's really what I'm trying to say is like so Twitter feed is publishing from your primary blogs to it's designed to publish automatically to your social media. So you can use Hootsuite, Twitter feed or if this then that. Those are the alternatives. There's actually a couple of others, but you guys get the idea. <clears throat> Give me a one if you if everybody understands the general idea of what, what we put Twitter feed and automating that, and two, if you're still a little struck. Um, Brett, you're asking about the Snap plugin. Hang on, let me holler over to Sue and just clarify something. Yeah, it's still working. The only reason I asked her is that there was, there was some people experiencing a couple issues with Pinterest or, or Google, actually specifically Google+. Everybody has a hard time with Google+. Uh, and that's, I'm talking about Google Plus. I'm talking about pu publishing too. Our software creates an RSS feed with Google Plus, which is the first problem that nobody has solved effectively except us, as far as I know. The other problem is publishing to Google Plus personal. Okay. There is no serve. I'm going to say this carefully. As far as I personally know, there is no service that is effectively and without interruption publishing to Google plus personal effectively. Okay, I may be incorrect about that with Snap, right? You might want to check that. Um, however, I'm having amazing success without interruption now for over, over 24 months with Hootsuite publishing to Google Plus biz pages automatically with no interruption. And as far as I personally know, uh, Google uh, Hootsuite is the only service that does that without interruption. Now, I will make an exception to the Google Plus personal page um, the Google Plus personal page only wire does have a s service that publishes to your personal page. 
and it seems to do it fairly effectively. However, it does turn off <laughs> over a couple of months. So we're looking for sustainability. Okay. Is Hootsuite taking your RSPIT? Yes. Um, Brett, since you guys are here, this is kind of advanced stuff, and I, I, it's mostly for the domain authority stacking course, but you guys are all badasses, so I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Actually, let me just make sure there's no mail enhancement stuff going to pop up at us. Because I know that none of you need to be mail enhanced. Signing in here. Got a lot of networks that we're running. Many, many. Uh oh. Now, I have heard many people say, more than one, that Hootsuite sucks so bad, it's just terrible. And I understand where they're coming from. Uh, Sue and I were able to hang out with the vice president of media and SEO of Hearst Media a couple years ago. And I, I know you guys know they're like a billion dollar company. Um, and he was like, oh, by the way, we own Hootsuite. I was like, okay. And, um, and it explains the staying power. It actually makes me feel better now, years later. I think it was a couple years ago. Um, because it's pretty solid. Like, they're not going to disappear. And when we have this many automated things running, you want to make sure that you have some, and something robust. And until we write our own, Thanks for your patience, guys. I have to actually log in to I figure it's worth showing you. This is a pretty powerful little tip right here. I'm still here. I'm just trying to get you this information. Damn it. Guys, don't log into my HeatSuite account, please. Change the password. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... One of the things that I like about this service is a, definitely a sidestep is it allows me to manage like entire Twitter armies should I want to. Okay. I think I have something, I have several Hootsuite accounts and I find that I can easily manage a hundred Twitter accounts in it. Okay. But to make matters more interesting, there's an incredibly powerful uh, mechanism called that's really hard to work with and people get really frustrated but as soon as you do you're going to realize the power in it Brett specifically for you you go up here to settings and to RSS Atom and whatever social media accounts you've set up including sub pages and pages to individual accounts you can just simply add an RSS and you can add an RSS to any service that Hootsuite allows to be imported and that includes the Google Plus pages okay so the Google Plus cancer factor fiction page this is a uh, WR2 meaning our automatic pin vid sites has been publishing videos from an automatic website which is cancerfactorfiction.com it's been publishing to that feed on the Google Plus biz page for over a year and a half with no fail and that was a long-term test that I'd done when I realized how robust it was I was trying to test several services all together when I realized how robust it was, I started switching my other things over because they were failing. And so it really does beat Twitter feed for that purpose, for Google+. Additionally, I've been testing it for Facebook publication, and it seems to be a solution to the Twitter feed uh, fail on Facebook based on the apps. Just a more robust service. It's a bigger organization. They've got a lot more money in development. It's just more stable when it comes to RSS feeds in my testing. 
Now, if this, if this, then that is also pretty stable. So you may want to try that. Give me a one if you guys understand what I'm, what I showed you there, and why I showed it to you. This is one of, this is a good kept secret. I think most people don't have the skill to fully use the RSS atom, you know, to its full usage. Okay. Great. Okay. So we're going on for quite a long time here. LinkedIn, B2B. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, I think Hootsuite is actually planning or has already the ability to add LinkedIn as well. It's one of the only services besides Twitter feed that allow that effectively. If this, then, may, then that may have added that. Okay. I like centralized control panels, which is why I use Hootsuite. You guys might want to distribute. Um, I do use two separate Hootsuite accounts for different layers of the web ring. That's just me personally. Please know that I'm not giving you web standards or rules right here. Sue ultimately verifies and creates the standards with an organization. I'm just telling you what I do now, and I don't think we've really clarified that. So definitely you're going to want to have, you know, we're not getting into the other web rings in this. This is a Tech Foundation one. But just know that you're not going to want to have the same Google account, for instance, on your WR2 and WR3 as you have your WR1. You guys know you got to separate your Google dashboards out, okay? You want a separate login and all that. Roy asks if I use Buffer. I played around with Buffer a lot. Um, Roy, I, Buffer buffers the time frame in which you, if you're, you know, machine gun automating stuff, it'll prevent it from coming out too much. Is that correct, Roy? Just give me a one if that's correct or two. It buffers the time. Yeah. I think Buffer is cool. It also has some domain authority. Um, one of the ways that I deal with that, when you're using Twitter feed, uh, you don't have to use Buffer because it has a GUID setting, which I'm happy to show you guys. Uh, we actually we show you how to set up Twitter feed in your account in this week. So it's all here for you. Um, in fact, when you go to set up Twitter feed, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your GUID. Hootsuite does not have a GUID setting. Um, so what you see is what you get. And I publish every, uh, that's a great question, Roy. I personally, on my pin vids, when I have, you know, 20 videos a day going out, I publish on the hour every hour to my social media accounts. And I, when it's video, I have no real problem with that. And you don't really need to worry too much. You don't want to be publishing every minute or every, you know, on Twitter and these kinds of things. That's the main thing. And a lot of the services that help you automate your one feed that we incorporate and ultimately, our long-term plans to set up some of these systems, you know, with our own software. We're, we're not going to recommend that you public every minute or every 10 minutes, you know. That's just overkill. You just want stuff to go out in a timely fashion. So I don't really use Buffer. It's not included as part of the OneFeed system because a lot of these systems, Roy, will just, you know. In fact, I'll show you in the Twitter feed setup here that I recommend every two hours, every hour to every two hours, just to be safe. Okay. Once your Twitter accounts start getting above 60 tweets, you start entering into the safe zone. I don't know if you guys know that, but Twitter has some important algorithms that you should be aware of. When you set up an account, or God forbid, not that I'm suggesting that you do this, you buy 5,000 accounts or 1,000 accounts or whatever, you know, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, if you're setting up your own, or even if you have five or 10, you know, tw Twitter accounts in your organization, you're going to want to make sure that you tweet you're going to want to make sure that you have that you retweet a little bit, make sure that you have follow a few people and have a few followers. That generally and also verify the account when in in the actual email in which the Twitter account was created. That's actually true in any social media. Okay, make sure that you're verifying these accounts and authenticating them and you know, your you know, fake accounts are against terms of service, so don't do that, you know, just Especially in your WR1, you want to make sure that you have real people with real social media in there. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Okay. All right. So also Yahoo Pipes. That's where everybody gets. Brett, you're, Brett, you're really anxious to like splice and dice. That's cool. But I want to make sure that you understand the basics before you get into that. You don't even have to splice and dice. Okay. Your, your primary setup is just, we're just plodding along here, making sure that your primary stuff is being syndicated to your social media. OK? 
Okay, do not splice and dice your feeds on the WR1 unless you have multiple WR1 platforms. Can you please give me a one if you have more than one WR1? You shouldn't. This course is designed to help you guys get your primary money site up and running. Brett's chomping at the bit to splice and dice and have a million feeds everywhere. That's cool, Brett. I recommend, Brett, if you're serious about knowing that kind of stuff, which we're going to get into a little bit before I go, that you probably want to take the one feed to rule them all course where we get into that. And, Brett, long term, you're going to want to jump in the domain authority. I'm not trying to upsell you anything. I'm just saying that I can tell that you're advanced. And we are going to get into this splicing here. Uh, you're just a little bit more advanced than most of the people in this class, which is a compliment. Because the question that you just asked me is pretty advanced. So I, I am going to address it, but I just want to make sure that everybody, besides Brett, um, understands the basics downstream publishing system. Give me a one if you, under, you guys feel comfortable with the basic automatic publishing system with feeds. Give me a two if you feel super uncomfortable or if you feel uncomfortable in any way. Okay, we don't have any twos, so I think we're okay to move on. Okay, let me see what Matt did create here. So, Yahoo Pipes is probably what Brett was talking about here. Pipes is one of the services that you can use. to take feeds and mix them up. And you kind of have to know what you're doing, which is why we've got this video in here to show you. Don't jump to the end. Make sure that you understand basic one feed setup. You got to understand, you guys, you're amongst the elite. It's advanced. If you're automatically publishing your, your blog posts downstream to one or more social media systems via RSS, you are way ahead of the curve. Okay. In other words, you're you actually you can run your blog post, you know, <laughs> you could publish from your iPhone and then boom, it's going to go everywhere. Make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. And really, the only limit is the amount of locations that you you stuck your RSS feed. Everybody understand that? Okay. At that point, then you get into the more advanced. You can see on using Yahoo Pipes, we give you a demonstration on how to use it. And oh, and it does link right to the one feed course already. Okay. And then we get into the one feed to rule them all course. Can you guys I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop this link in here for everybody. And if you guys could just uh, can you guys just click on that uh, link right here? And show me and tell me what pops up. Do you have access to that chart? Give me a one if you have access to the to this chart where it says check here. Okay. Brett, can you see that chart? You have access? Okay. That means that everybody in this course has access to the one feed, the advanced one feed training that we, uh, it's actually synergizing with module. And that's where this comes in. Okay. So to answer, to make sure, I just want Brett to make sure that we have a clear outline of what it is that you're supposed to do. And if you haven't read this first, that's really, okay, let's go ahead and just quickly go through it. One feed, your primary uh, money site, you can see that you've got your blog feed. This is an advanced, this is a pseudo advanced, so this is actually not our deluxe suit, um, uh, one feed training, which we don't provide here. We actually haven't released much to the public except in the domain authority stacking course, but Sue is still setting the standard on that one. It's something that Jimmy and Sue have been working on. I would consider that it's so huge that it's, I still haven't fully got my head around it, 
But I just want you to know that there is a level past this of which you can aspire. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to try to teach it to you because it's about like, it's like domain authorities uh, times 10. It's just been enhanced by a Jimmy and Sue. But this is, a, this is already incredibly powerful. So you've got your blog, your YouTube, and your Google Plus feed. And each one of these, you follow a similar pattern. You're going to create, and hopefully this is going to help you, Brett. You're going, to, um, you're going to send each one of these feeds. This, you have to have our Google Plus RSS software in order to, use, to, in order to do this one. And you have to use the YouTube feed that I gave you uh, with your own brand channel, okay, obviously, in order to perform this one. And you can see the sub-tasks you're going to need to do with each one. And then you also want to do it with your raw feed, okay? So let's just start out with your blog, because that's really the one. If you guys aren't able to get to the YouTube or anything this week, you're going to take your original blog feed. You're going to post it out to the social media channels. That's the thing I just showed you on Hootsuite. And you can use Twitter feed. You have options there. Create backlinks to the original broadcast channel. This is just pointing out that uh, by doing this, you're, you're automatically, this is a reminder that you're creating backlinks. Okay. Another step is, I'm not sure if there's, an, oh yeah, there is. Let's start at the top. Spun broadcast channel. The original spun, spun broadcasting channel. Let me just pause for a second. Guys, I'm going to put you on hold. i got to ask Sue something. I haven't looked at this chart in a month. One moment. There's a better step-by-step um, -step that we can give you guys. Yeah, I mean, the, the, um, the overview is the one feed. The overview is cool, but I think you guys are better off with just the process map. So what's in the Tech Foundation course is a real simple um, one feed system. We've been experiencing some changes in Yahoo Pipes, and um, I need to get back into the one feed and update that a little bit. Those, the URLs that you use need to change a little bit for some silly reason. They've modified their software. I hate it when people can't just like write their software and leave it alone, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for it. Hang on, i got to find it. I need to become a member. This is so sad. Yeah, what's up with that? You're out of here. Right? <laughs> Brett's, uh, Brett's going for it. It's like question, question, question. That's good. While she's looking for that, Brett, I'll read your question. Sorry if this is out of the scope. I have a few clients where I do weekly Google Hangouts, which is good. I create a blog post on the blog with a Hangout embedded prior to the Hangout going live. They like the streaming aspect of the Hangouts. Well, yeah, that's good. I then have the Hangout transcribed and transcription gets added to the post a few days later, which is great. If I look up the one feed RSS to these blogs, I'm guessing that I don't want to publish the post until... Oh, good question. Um, wow. Okay. It depends on a couple of things. You're better off, like the first time the bot comes, if you have more content, it's going to... But the next time the bot comes around, the content will be included. So the question will be for you, Brett, are you more concerned about getting the broadcast, including the transcription, to your actual physical human audience? Or are you more concerned about rankings? 
because that's really a question of the tipping point there. You're not going to not get the advantages of having that content by adding it later. Well, yeah, you got to choose one though. I mean, if you don't have the transcription done, the question is, does your if you're telling your audience, think about it of TV station. If your audience is waiting for that hangout on that blog and they're hanging there and it's due on Tuesday, make it Tuesday. So, if you've got a one feed set up though, you're <laughs> you got to consider that like the one feed is going to go everywhere with or without the transcription as soon as it's published live. So, you know, transcribe faster, dude. <laughs> You know, it's not it's not an either or. It's like, okay, you guys, we have um, Sue has given us the doc. You, now you can follow this step by step. This is gonna be a little bit more helpful for you guys. Yeah, this is the advanced. It's got all the steps in it. I'll drop this link into the. Um... Okay, great. Okay, you guys, um, this is going to be a little bit easier. The, over, the overview is really, really nice to have, that diagram that we were looking at. This will give you the exact, this is the process that our outsource team follows. This is huge, you guys. So that should solve all of your questions, Brett. I would also like to add here a disclaimer in that by no means, is this one feed system an exhaustive possibility? We have students that are constantly adding and tweaking and creating. Once you understand the principles of downstream domain authority stacking and downstream publishing, you can make some changes that are customized to your particular situation. We've given you the framework. This has been highly successful for us. And this is not the super deluxe advanced system, but it's definitely an ass kicking system. Like it's enough for 90% of the businesses and niches out there. Some of the stuff we're enhancing is really when you're trying to swallow an entire market and target like auto insurance, okay? Because you can really do that. You can really think in terms of big vertical concepts. And there's, let me just try for one more thing because we need to kind of wrap this up a little bit. You should have all the tools you really need here to start setting that up. Just a, re just a reminder, which I think is a, a decent reminder that this is just an old training site. We don't use it much anymore, but it's called Don't Forget the Basics. This is a, uh, there I was minding my own business one night when all of a sudden Sue handed me a pizza. Okay. This is just one diagram that Jimmy and Sue did that tried to create a coherency and train about sites, content, domain authority stacking, and so on and so forth. And, um, what I really wanted to depart, uh, impart to depart. I need more sleep. Um, let's see. There's no such thing as information overload. There is only such thing as potential meaning overload. Okay, this is one of my mentors, David Allen. He wrote a book called Getting Things Done, which is good for planning. At the end of the day, you still got to know how things are stacked, right? Yes, we will touch in on Samson, Brett. I knew you were going to ask that because you're an animal. Uh, Brett's going to rule the whole universe. I'm very scared of him. He's also doing Hangouts. The cool thing about Hangouts is that, just a side topic, Brett, is that Hangouts really are putting you right into the broadcast environment. It really fuses blogs with live syndication. I still do believe that Hangouts have a wild card in terms of YouTube, but really, ultimately, they're just another YouTube video. You know, I'm getting, I did a couple tests and got ridiculous rankings just because it was a Hangout. So we launched, a, we have a placeholder called uh, hangoutsempire.com. We plan on launching it probably, we wanted to wait till the platform stabilized because we noticed a lot of problems with YouTube's infrastructure and everything. Probably launch that next year, but you know, the purpose of Hangouts could, you want that platform gets a little bit more robust. Anyway, back to this. Um, there's only one underlining meaning to everything that we're going to show you. Okay, this is really, Domain authority stacking and engagement ranking. Now, this was designed for the pin bid thing, but this is really appropriate when looking at uh, one feed in general. It doesn't matter if it's pin bid automation via one feed or your WR1, which is what Tech Foundation is about. So I'm giving you guys a sneak peek because I think you can handle it. 
the main thing I wanted to, to advise you on, you can look through this if you want. It's a specific diagram I want to show you guys. Okay, let's go back. Just remember that automation, there's content, there's traffic, and there's domain authority, backlinking. All of this is kind of happening at the same time. It's kind of like when Brett said, I said, well, do you want to get your information to your audience or are you focused on SEO? It really is everything all at once right now, isn't it? So the three layers to a sustainable network, remember what's going on in your long-term vision. I just want to remind you guys where you're going. Okay. PBN is generally focused on page rank and domain authority. We're not getting into that, but a broadcasting network is what we're focused on helping you build, and that's what this training course is about. This Tech Foundation One training is really about having your core bullseye, your money site. Page rank, domain authority, traffic, and automatic content syndication. The one feed that we went over today, that's really the automatic content syndication. Okay. We have many, many students, literally we've trained thousands, okay? Most of them excel at one of these layers, but not all of them. The three layers will be required, and what we're trying to help you set up, what we are setting up if you follow instructions, are all three at the same time, and the one feed is a significant part, okay? So content syndication is what we went over today. It's like if you view the red arrows as content syndication through the one feed, you can see that here's your site, and here's content going out to all these different layers, right? Okay, well what they're doing, what are they giving back to you in return? They're giving you the green arrows in return, which is just domain authority, page authority. Give me a one, this is like the most important thing in my kind of, I'm not like the kind of technical person that Sue and Jimmy and Kevin, these guys are master technical expertise. I'm a marketer, right? But when they started explaining this stuff in this fashion, I really understood what was going on. Give me a one if you understand syndicating downstream. We're talking about syndicating downstream automatically through one feed. <laughs> this is the mother load. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I, I created this at OMG Live Nashville last year, um, right before my presentation, like three hours before I presented it. <laughs> Nothing like presenting in three hours, you know, to get your dopamine up. But it's really important. Uh, generally, people have a light bulb moment when they see this. It's kind of funny. We called it, we actually called it Sue and Jimmy and I call it Don't Forget the Basics kind of, the, kind of as a joke. Because, guys, this is not by any means basic. <laughs> you were, oh, Roy was there. Okay. So if the, the purpose of the one feed is to make all this stuff happen, and it's kind of misleading because this can be thousands of sites. I know in some of the stuff Sue does and I do, we've got hundreds of sites. We've got servers running with just this stuff on it, right? And that doesn't even go over the semantic markup and stuff that Kevin teaches and make sure that you're speaking to the semantic web and properly marking things, which gives you a whole nother level of ranking boost and, and uh, brand clarification for the, in, you know, for the market. But to make matters more interesting, you've got the third set of arrows on here. The blue is what I'm focused on in our organization. So that's the actual traffic and human beings coming back from all that. So not only are you giving, the, are the green arrows coming back to the money set? Remember that number one, you guys, what is that number one, that giant green one I'm focusing on here? That's what this course is about, isn't it? It is your money site, your SEO Tech Foundation <laughs> One training. That's really the whole purpose of this eight-week course, is to make sure that that bullseye is stable enough to get the crap hammered out of it with domain authority and traffic. Everybody give me a one if you understand that, and a two if you think I'm just full of shit. Yeah, because you know I'm not. That's how it works. You're driving traffic and domain authority, to you, 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 everywhere. That's why we call it you-everywhere.com. All right, so I call it mynetworkempire.com. And we're trying to teach this to you guys in a systematic, stackable way. This is why it takes a certification event to really teach it all, you know, step-by-step step in person. But you guys are doing it on the web, which is the second best way. With enough time, you'll get it. Okay, so that's really cool. So my main... Uh, I'm always walking around, like even when I'm setting up, you know, a 100,000 page pin vid site or five of them or a server for that or whatever it is that I'm doing or Sue is doing, setting up, a, you know, a network for clients or that we outsource this type of stuff. Whatever it is that we're doing, we're always aware that we're automating the trap, we're automating the content downstream or snippets thereof in order to get back domain authority and traffic. 
Now what we've done is we've engineered it for you, this series of courses, um, you know, pre, our certification course that you're in now, is one, and the upcoming one, uh, Tech Foundation 2, which really dives a lot more into this traffic. Okay, we felt that putting this kind of traffic and domain authority stuff in the Tech Foundation 1 was way too much. I mean, it's eight weeks just to get you guys um, completely solid with your silo structures, which, by the way, this week, and we are a little bit behind on a couple of you guys cracking things because of the strange changes happening. But once you get that all, you will have your WR1 silo structure set up, and that's what you will be going with this as you continue this journey through the certification things, okay? Hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of... Okay, we do... <laughs> You're not supposed to see what's next, but that's where we talk about GSA. And we have advanced trainings when you guys are at gsasoftware.com and all that. But don't blow yourself at this point. The training that you're in, let's go back to the one feed. Uh, somebody asked me, I think it was Brett, a little bit about Samson. Okay. Let me open that up a little bit. You guys have been very patient with me today. It's the first time I've tried to teach this without having a team on the call the full time. So I can't watch YouTube videos while they're talking. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, it's interesting because the one feed, yeah, Garrett, I know you're having a challenge. I'll, I'll hook you up. This is the more advanced one feed system, and it really segues nicely into our one feed. We're talking, this is more advanced SEO now. In this course, there's a really, there's a lot of things that are focused on the blue arrow, which was the, uh, actually, was it the green arrow? Yeah, do, the domain authority. So feed burner, pingler, feed shark, RSS submit. That's really for the, the domain authority stacking that we're going to do. Samson is another one. Samson actually belongs directly into, directly in your blog. Okay. Now, there is, a, wow, that's embarrassing. We linked directly to a warrior from, no, it's okay. It's still here. Conrad's a very cool guy. He's been supporting this plugin for a long time. Uh, it's pretty simple how it works. Okay. However, we strongly recommend that you use the domain authority list that Sue and Jimmy have prepared instead of Conrad's. Okay. Part of that is, is because remember, we're really focused on domain authority sites. Now the way that Samson works is it creates what I call virtual backlinks. Virtual backlinks are backlinks from services that when you hit the, when you hit or ping the site, they allow you to, they add a link on that page dynamically. They're kind of like Alexa or anything else. So they give you a link back to the site, and you can do that on the fly. And then Samson creates an RSS feed, which you can then also add to RSS submit. It's actually seriously badass when you add our domain authority list to it, which I'm going to give you guys. Even though it's for the domain authority stacking course, I will give you that list. <laughs> so when you install Samson on a blog, you're going to replace the list that he provides, that Conrad provides by default. Not all of them are bad, but some of them are like pretty useless. And the cleaning up of that list has been very helpful because then we know that you're dynamically, every time you publish, let me find a, gosh darn, I'll just find this Samson installed somewhere. But you're really like dragging this stuff out of me, man. <laughs> We're gone like hours now. Let me see if I can find Samson installed somewhere. If you guys can't hang around for this, I understand that uh, it's been a long one. Let's go ahead and see where I have. It definitely helps. Like I, I did, I did the Pinvid network without um, Samson installed, and then I turned it on, and I definitely got results from it. And it's just, it's really a set and forget once you set it up one time. So I'm currently trying to find one that's actually installed for you guys. And not having as much luck as I would like.
What is it you're looking for? Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I got it. Okay. Looking for a, a, a site that I can show that's got Samson. There we go. Maybe this could be one. Okay, this is a client site. Don't look too closely at this site for SEO and get and jump all over me about it, guys, because this is a prototype, early, early, early pin vid site. And it's got some issues, but. This is what Samsung looks like when it's installed. Give me a one if you guys can see that. Okay. Once it's installed, it's automated. So every site you publish, I get this question a lot. Even when I auto blog, yeah, even when you auto blog. <laughs> okay. This is this actually is a automatic pin bin site. It does not use the theme that Kevin is designing yet, which we're switching everything over to, but. So these campaigns are automatic once they're automatic. They do have this in there. You can still do manual ping. Um, but you don't really need to do that because what I do is I install Samson. And it creates these automatic backlinks and gives you an RSS feed. So you set up, the way that it works is you add, a, you add your one campaign and that's all you really need to do. And then what it does is it gives you... It's got automatic RSS filler text. You don't need to change any of that, you guys. Just leave it exactly as it is. So the RSS pages that are out there, it'll say, highly recommended site for your topic theme. Trusted, okay, this site is about a disease called Morgellons. Trusted Morgellons website. Useful Morgellons website. And this site, guys, is automated. And this is our more advanced uh, certification course. It's probably about a couple of courses away for you guys. I'll be launching in September. This course gets thousands upon thousands upon thousands of visitors a month. I haven't touched it really for like a year. Okay. So just so you know, like anybody who tells you that auto blogging is dead, you can just tell them to shut up. And you just have to do it right. Okay. But Samson is very helpful even on auto sites. But on your WR1, you can put it in there. But what you're going to want to do is take the domain authority stacking list that Sue and Jimmy approved. And you're going to want to put it in the URL list. It comes with a default. And this is not the default. Clearly, I did not put on our domain authority stacking list. <laughs> this is the one that this is the one that came with the default from the from Conrad. And what these sites are are what we call dynamic Alexa sites. I call it virtual backlinking now. I've, I think it's an interesting way to talk about it. It's virtual because if you look at these sites, whoops, I'm glad that wasn't porn. What that allows us to do is like when you hit the site, what Samson does is it hits the site with the URL that's just publishing. So if the blog, um, here we go, Franklin Gov, this is a good one. A lot of them are .govs or government sites that are like Alexa, not so much nasty. Like I can tell you that this one was probably removed when Jimmy and Sue went through the list. <laughs> so looks like Franklin's down too. So what it does is it puts your website, it insorts your website or post directly into it. And if it's a decent domain authority, it's going to give you an instant backlink virtually by just inserting your website URL. Okay, the error is coming out because there's no site in it. Let me just try that again. I actually want you guys to know how the concept works so that you don't think we're just blowing smoke here. It's pretty powerful. So what this, this software is going to dyna dynamically and automatically put your site in as a virtual backlink. Okay, and, and this, this is the specific site that allows that. So what these guys are doing is they're running a script on the site. This would probably would probably have not been included in the list that I'm going to give you guys. That would have been removed, voted off the island. So what we've done is we've gone through and collected a really large list of sites that do have virtual backlinks that have domain authority that is not terrible. Give me a one if you guys understand the general concept. So this root domain has a domain authority. Trovi.com has a domain authority of 43. Do you guys see that? 
So by putting a virtual backlink on there, your page authority will be very low, but the domain authority will be very high. But that's why it's a little no most people have got it completely wrong. They're focused on page rank and all these things. These high domain authority sites and your virtual backlink on them is helpful. All right. Give me a one if you guys understand the general concept. It's not exactly pure domain authority stacking, Brett, but it's virtual backlinking, and that's a very, it's a, yeah, it's a kind of domain, it's a kind of stacking. But what's really kind of, yeah, it's close. But what's kind of cool is that Conrad's plugin does this pretty automatically. Now, I'm currently setting up virtual backlinking campaigns with other methods besides the plugin, and it's pretty powerful. But the rules still hold. You want to use high domain authority. That's why we scrubbed that list for you guys. Okay, and I'm going to drop that into the Skype room as soon as this call. I'm writing it down. I'm going to drop the scrub list in the Skype room. So in case you guys decide you want to go this route, the thing that's kind of mind blowing about it is that it's just on autopilot. In fact, <laughs> when we hang up, I'm actually going to copy and paste our Sue's approved list and get rid of this crap. Because like this, there's some really bad stuff on here that is not going to have much of any domain authority. Okay, so that's how that works, and it's on autopilot now. I want to give you guys a heads up. There is a ping automatic thing that you can add to this, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can, let me see, it's under settings. Plugin settings. Yeah, you can set these to 24 unique visitor ping. This is a weird thing, uh, which I don't really want to get into today because it's controversial. Um, auto create post campaigns. Yes, this means if you turn this off, then if you're using a pin vid system or any kind of auto blogging, and I don't recommend you guys ever auto blog on your WR1. I'm going to repeat, guys, don't auto blog in your WR1 ring. Does everybody know that? Please give me a big old fat juicy one. In this area right here, your brand, just don't auto blog. Don't auto syndicate content. Okay, create your own. There'll be plenty of time later on, a couple months from now, and our other stuff for you to auto blog, you know, a billion pages in one year. We'll show you how to do that. It's called the billionaire, the billion page club. <laughs> if you really just want to auto blog, that's fine, but keep that way over here. Do not mix your peanut butter and your chocolate with auto blogs, okay? But the cool thing is that when you get there, you can still use Samson on those. Brett is asking, how about auto blog on subdomain? Uh, there's no problem at all. You can. But don't auto blog on your WR1. I know, Brett, that Mike Long talked openly in a OMG Live webinar about setting up Video Kraken, our auto blog video software on a WR1. And I know that Jimmy also says that he plays around. But you got to understand that Jimmy's not a normal human being, okay? Jimmy intentionally de indexes websites just to see if he can and then re indexes them. Okay, he's a demolition master. Like, don't, I mean, listen to Jimmy. But just check in with Sue. <laughs> yeah, like Mike Long put that video Kraken thing on, and, and I got to tell you, I personally would not put video Kraken on a WR1 subdomain, even as so subdomains can't be burnt, theoretically. I mean, I've heard Sue say that, you know, yeah, they can't be burnt right now. I personally don't want to be liable when Google comes out, not that they ever would, and, and I don't see how they could, you know, but comes out and says, all right, if you burn the subdomain, you burn the root domain. Like, why would I want to tell my group that? Jimmy does all kinds of crazy shit all the time, pardon my French. I've seen stuff that you would not believe in, in the walls of this lab here. <laughs> okay. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and do it on my own stuff. Like, I certainly wouldn't do it on Ramona's site. You know, Ramona's, you know, a client, you know, who has the, the Morgellons. She's got a bunch of disease domains. I mean domains that are about disease, and I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't risk her root domain just because I don't want. First of all, I don't want to have to like repair them and depenalize, you know, unpenalize them. Another thing I want to mention is that Samson is a principle which you can use outside of the plugin environment. You can do virtual backlinking as well as your other thing. We haven't talked about that much in DAS, but we probably will. Okay, and uh, you know it's diminishing returns on that kind of stuff, but it's. When you can do it on autopilot, like, why wouldn't you, right? The other thing is that, what did I do with the Samsung domain? Here it is. Um, there is an API key for Pingler. I do use that. Uh, I used Linklicious for a while as well. Um, 
Jimmy talks a lot about the incredible indexer that he uses for um, re-indexing stuff that's in a different context. Conrad has not put that in here. Uh, I used to use OnlyWire on this, and I was getting really diminishing returns. OnlyWire, when you're really doing a lot of posts on your secondary networks, OnlyWire credits can get used up really, really fast. So it's really up to you, and they do allow some options. I do use Pingler because it's really inexpensive. You can just put in your IP, uh, your API, and then you get those. You get some extra ping networks on there. But remember, your blog also already pings. You guys know that, right? If you go down to your settings, just your regular WordPress settings, um, you can make sure that you've got your RSS properly set up for multiple. Actually, I probably should show you guys that. But just really make sure you've got all the RSS systems that you can inside WordPress. If you want me to show you that, I can. I don't really know how much you guys know about that kind of stuff. All right, but the cool thing is not to forget, when you go to Sam, the main thing about Samsung that's interesting is not only do you have those virtual backlinks, you've got the RSS feed, right? We're going to wrap up this course today. So you can grab this. And here's all of Ramona's posts that have automatically posted to this. Now, you're in the WR1, so these will have been manual posts carefully written. In, case, in Brett's case, it's going to be like YouTube, you know, Google Hangouts or that kind of thing. Okay, and the RSS feed acts just like any other RSS feed. Okay, you can see. But they're all your virtual backlinks. And how cool is that? All right? So you got these virtual backlinks. There it is. And this is literally a virtual backlink automatic YouTube video site. Now, what's going to happen with that, guys? And you can see in the YouTube, I'm just going to take things like RSS submit. First thing I do when I'm building out a network of five or a hundred sites, whatever it is, I just add that. I don't do them all at once. Okay, there's the RSS feed URL. We're going to call this, I actually call it uh, Gellum's uh, Virtual. Just create some kind of name so that you know that it's Samson. Just, you know, do whatever you want. And then um, the new RSS submit requires that you put in your keywords. So in this case, it would be more Gellum's. I happen to know the themes. Now, if you've done your research and you've followed the Tech Foundation training weeks one through eight, you guys are going to be serious badasses of knowing what your RSS feeds should be labeled, right? <laughs> You're going to know your keyword DNA. And that's why it's so important. That's why we're like driving that stuff home because all over the place, you've got to start adding these keywords. So I happen to know what these are because I did all the crack and, and the research on there. Okay. So there's a description. Okay, you just need to do that. Click OK. And then you've got the feed. Okay. So the feed is in there. And I do a collection. If I have a network of 10 or 15 pivot sites, I might use the same RSS submit profile. I might have unique ones. It depends on the size of the network and the topic. Okay. And then once you... Um, this is truly automatic. What you've just done there is fairly sophisticated, guys. You've automatically generated a virtual backlink campaign with posts that you're already doing. You've imported the feed along with your regular feeds into RSS Submit. And RSS Submit, once you set up a profile, um, you just click Submit. And it says that one or more RSS directories does not have a profile assigned and will be skipped from submission. Would you like to assign a profile now? And if this is a unique campaign or a unique, to uh, you know, for a unique client, you'll set up a unique uh, profile for that submission. I can have anywhere between three and ten RSS things submitting all at the same time. And if you do have a lot of RSS feeds, it can take a couple hours to submit to everything. So I'm not going to set up a profile. I'm going to use this for demonstration purposes only. And what that means is this will go out to the, the RSS directories that slurp in RSS feeds, and a lot of them are fairly high domain authority. And this is domain authority stacking. You've literally <laughs> used the Samson feed to um, create a kind of a mini virtual domain authority stacking campaign. Okay. So it, when this is running, it's going to automatically open up Mozilla. So it uses Mozilla as the browser indicator. And probably in about 15 minutes, it'll have gone through the free sites. If I'd set up a profile, it would have gone into some of the more advanced sites. It is worth setting up a profile on RS submit, you got RSS submit, you guys, because the ones that require authentication have a higher domain authority. 
because they're just generally higher content, right? Because there's user interaction and all that. So it's going, you'll see as it's submitting, it's going through Blog Digger, it's going through all the different services. Now just imagine if all the RSS feeds that we created today that Brett was talking about with YouTube, if the Google Plus RSS made from our software, you guys realize like how killer ridiculous that is? It's just like automatic, it's like nested domain authority stacking. <laughs> you've got a virtual backlink campaign going on, you've got Google Plus going on, it's huge, yeah, it is huge. You can also understand the difficulty we have in teaching it, right, because there's a lot of stuff going on. But you guys, um, I think we really got a good handle on it today. Like I showed you a lot of different things, but I showed you the important things. Like if you did only those three things today and even, you know, didn't go all the way out and into the stratosphere and try to slice and dice, like Brett, I know you want to like splice a YouTube channel with your main channel. Well, if you follow that map, you can. And then you could put your YouTube, in our advanced techniques, when you take a YouTube video, like you could take one YouTube video channel, you could take your YouTube channel and then a YouTube channel of your competitor. I know that's a little weird. But if your competitor had a domain authority or a page authority on his channel that was really, really high, every time he published on his feed, he would grow your feed. So literally the momentum that you're generating, you're kind of, you're kind of surfing his page authority on that. Uh, and that's not a main method. That's like methods that I use elsewhere. But you create a feed out of that. That's still going to build your domain authority. And that's an advanced method that I really think probably you should um, – follow Jimmy and Sue's methods on because you don't want to you got to be careful when you're util when you're mixing and meshing that you're not building too much domain authority for your competitor it's got to be carefully you got to know what you're doing know how you're building and how you're driving that those green arrows to your site sometimes it's worth it and if I found in YouTube channels when done right it's worth it I've got one minor complaint I would like to share with you guys about this um, the new version of submitting RSS feed. I've emailed the company. Why they don't have a CAPTCHA breaker, you know, death by CAPTCHA or some insert in this thing is like the stupidest thing ever. I mean, that's the one reason like I would just like, like us to rebuild this. <laughs> because, you know, if you've got 15 or 20 feeds in here, you know, you just might as well hand that to an outsourcer because there's no death by CAPTCHA. So somebody's got to be sitting there throughout the day and God forbid that be me and like breaking the CAPTCHAs. And I just, I'm not into that. And that really adds up with 15 feet, you know, anywhere between 5 and 15 feeds. This thing will be running for three hours, and it stops when the CAPTCHAs pop, pop up. So that's a solution I would like to see built into the system. Now, people have talked about other RSS systems that they've seen. They submit to the directories and so on and so forth. Um, you know, let us know. We're a, we're a perpetual mastermind group. This stuff is available. You can see that we're dynamic. Like I talked a lot about Hootsuite today which I've never revealed before because my testing wasn't complete. I needed a year of testing in it. You know, there's not one way to skin this cat. There's multiple ways to do it. But once you understand the principles, you can start stacking this stuff yourself. Are there any questions before we, before we shut down? Let's go ahead and look at our homework assignment. I realize that we're a little disjointed because I showed you some new things today that I don't normally show students. Um, here's, your w, here's your week six homework and checklist. Brett, I'm glad that your head is spinning. Uh, I, you know, when you see all these giant process maps and you see all this exciting stuff, it's like you want to do everything. Like when I first started getting to one feed RSS stuff, I started sticking everything everywhere. I know that sounds bad, but I started slicing this and testing that and sticking this there and testing this. As it started to develop, and as Sue, Sue and Jimmy and myself, Kevin, Matt, as we began to sit down and really look at it, a coherent plan that's very, very clear. When you add the element of domain authority to this, then you stop running around like a chicken with your head caught off, like testing stuff. Because just because something has a feed doesn't mean you use it. Just because your competitor has a high domain authority feed doesn't mean you use it in this particular location. Sometimes it's just a single touch, you know, and you do one thing right and it makes sense. But if it doesn't make sense with the domain authority stacking, you don't just want to automatically spl uh, splice and dice. Okay, so we cover a lot of that in the more advanced mechanisms. The homework for this week is be sure to watch this webinar replay. This is one of our original. I'm going to add your webinar replays to the archives. And 
since we're a little bit behind on the vertical keywords and things, let's just hold off for a minute. You'll hear from us in the chat group about the second silos because you guys, some of you haven't received your full silo spread. So we'll go ahead and, and move on. I'm not going to sign this aspect because I'm really not sure what Matt was going to do in this particular situation. All right, but we'll go ahead and hit that in the Skype forum. And you can expect the domain authority stacking Samson reinclude uh, in the Skype room immediately upon closing of this webinar. Any other questions before I go? I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Yes, uh, great question, Brett. Um, if you go to one, one feed uh, to rule them all .com, where the sales page is, you don't need to take the sales page. I do talk a little bit about how to, there's a video on there about how to confirm your results. The main results confirmation is going to be you're going to see an increase of qualified backlinks. You should see an increase of, if you're doing things right, you're going to see an increase of domain authority over time, sometimes very quickly. Um, and you're going to see traffic. If you do it, for instance, if you do a, let me show you guys one last thing before you go. Rocky start, nice finish. Yeah, no, thanks, Mitch. It's a, you know, the storm in South Africa is a little um, unexpected. You know, stuff happens in life, and one of the great things about owning our own businesses and developing software is that, you know, sometimes the unexpected, there's unexpected blessings and all that stuff. Um, let me just go ahead and, okay, find you an example. Uh, entrepreneur means problem solver, right? So sometimes problems come up spontaneously. All right, let me see here. There we go. I'm going to show you. Here's a, keep in mind this is a WR2, guys, so don't hold me. Don't treat this like it's a WR1. Remember that auto blog I showed you, the more Gellman's Factory Fiction? Average time on site, six, six minutes and 39 seconds, which is absurd, right, in automation. And, okay, it's got, it used to be a lot more, but it's got 6,000, I mean, 3,600 visitors per month. That's just kind of interesting, and we're going to get more into that in the automatic. You, my passion, guys, is, is the automatic video, you know, stuff. So in the third certification course, which uh, we'll have in a couple months, it's still getting on the, I think we have it on the calendar. I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, by that time, you guys will be ready because this stuff will really, you'll be done with this course. You'll have your WR1 set up. But to answer Brett's question, you're going to go to campaigns. And you should be able, Brett, to see your campaign successes in inside your campaigns. If you've properly tagged, like in Twitter feed, you can actually tag the name of your RSS feed. Okay, and you can do that in several other services. So if you properly tag your campaign name, it's going to appear under campaigns. Okay, so I could look at, you know, I can look at the spread for a year, and then I can go to the campaign. And under campaigns, you'll see, you know, some of these are, at least for the social RSS feeds, they're modern. I have really, really good success on other ones. Part of this is that, this site was not completely finished in that automation that we're still working on some of the rings. Yeah, it also shows on the site map, Roy is saying. Um, yeah, you should be able, in, in Google Webmaster Tools, you'll also be able to see the success of the, what do you mean by that actually, Roy? Sh what do you mean it shows on the, not sure really what you mean by that. But you're going to be able to see a massive increase of traffic and depending upon how you've tagged, your Twitter feed. This is actually really, really bad. I wish I hadn't shown this one as a demo. This is a, a Twitter feed um, tag right here. Over the course of the year, there would have been a few hundred, but you should see an increase or hike in traffic. So really, when you have the opportunity to start labeling your um, RSS feeds in the environments where it will, some of them will show up in Google Analytics. Okay. Also, 
uh, you will see occasionally you will see traffic from some of these sites that you're running your three feeds through and that'll actually be on referrals so there's more than one way to start seeing these okay I definitely see a hike in when I'm running things automatically when I hit social explosion for when I install social explosion which is actually an entirely different topic that has nothing to do with the one feed that explains people there is no RSS feed involved with the social explosion install it's a separate product we have our own network uh, our own um, social explosion network empire traffic network and that's different because you don't have to run your RSS RSS feed through that you just install a plugin and you'll start to see a hike and all these things so hopefully Brett that gives you an idea of one of the ways you can use campaigns especially with Twitter feed Hootsuite and the rest to start looking at those campaigns okay are there any other questions I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up before I go to lunch uh, I'm really thrilled to death with how well you guys are doing. Uh, I'm aware that we had some stumbling blocks with the um, Kraken uh, Google changes happening. Um, we're hoping that that will be up in the next couple of days, and but we can't make any promises. We're still looking at that. Uh, in the, in the event that we're not up, we'll make some other arrangements in terms of making sure that you have at least your top level silo. I'm not sure exactly what that will be, uh, but we'll keep you guys informed. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Your brain is probably overfilling. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And again, I will see you in the Skype group. And I'll make sure that, Garrett, that you have a um, the one feed map that you don't have access to. Thanks, guys. And don't forget, we have... Uh, actually, before you guys go, since you're here, be aware of the traffic hospital course. Don't forget uh, to be ready for that webinar. Traffic Hospital is coming up and start looking ahead. I'm going to start talking to you guys specifically about the, the launch of the uh, certification level two training, which gets a lot more into this kind of traffic. But I know, Brett, you're definitely interested in that. All right. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Just keep an ear to the ground so that you know what's coming. We'll see you on the next webinar. Bye, guys.